Travelling culture, irrespective of these new programmes you see, grabbing girls and kissing them, it didn't happen. Most girls were chaperoned and I met my wife 50 odd year ago and uh, the families didn't know one another but we met across a, believe it or believe it not, it sounded very funny, but across a stick fire and she, her eyes were sparkling in the, the firelight. I know, I know it sounds very romantic but it was really true and I asked her dad if I could take her out and we was allowed to walk out for a while and then eventually I married her obviously and it was wonderful because fairs and race meetings were where travelling people meet one another and we sing and we dance and it's very very happy times and they still are happening today particularly in North Devon um, it's a brilliant community among travelling people for squeeze boxes, fiddles, guitars, song. I've travelled the country all of my life till about 15 years ago. Uh, Ill Elf fell on me and I had to settle down. We tried to uphold the Romani culture to teach our children and grandchildren the old ways because in recent years there has been a lot of bad publicity um, about Romanis and itinerants, but a lot of them aren't English Romanis, of which my family have. Well, you'll find most English are uh, Romani. When you go into Europe, you get the Rom. You get Sente gypsies. They're basically different tribes. The majority you'll find in England are Romanis. The word gypsy is when we started to travel through the Western world, they saw the dark skin in a foreign language and they went, oh, they must be Egyptian. And it's been condensed down to, to gypsy. But their actual title is Romani. I wrote this poem after my dad passed away, but because traveller people were big, big storytellers, um, I put this down as a joined up thing, listening to stories that he told time and time again about the life they had when dad's family he was the youngest of 12 children and of hardships they had when they lived in wagons and tents and it was after we had some quite bad snowfalls just a few years ago when we hadn't had any for several years and it's called it snowed in the night laying in the wagon quiet as a ghost tucked up inside we're as warm as toast. Why so still we can't hear a thing, not a bird singing and so nearly spring. Open the curtain, why is it so light? Now we see why, it snowed in the night. This is a, a picture of air coursing and people say about blood sports but um, air coursing was done for a reason. It was to fill the pot and feed the children with it and ourselves and most coursing dogs were run in pairs generally mother and daughter. The daughter would do all the hard work, take the air up for the field, twist and turn it, and the mother would lay back, watch which way it was going, and then at a turn, cut in and kill the, the air. So it's quite a, they work quite as a tight team. Living in such a small confined area, neatness and hygiene was quite important. Because I'm totally illiterate, I made it my life's work to make sure my children were educated and all of my three children can read and write and have gone on to do their own businesses and they are part of the communities they live in, they pay their taxes and they live as non-travelling people because the ways of the old travellers because of bylaws are now finished, you can no longer travel the road, you have to be settled as I am settled here. Song and dance among travelling people is, is very, very important because we're going back over a hundred years ago now. We, we weren't accepted in the local village pubs, so we made our own entertainment at home. And there's always been musicians among travelling people for centuries. This song is called No More. I wrote it after visiting a council-run gypsy site with a, a recycling centre at one side and a landfill at the other side of them and uh, a tide inlet and twice a day through the summer months the tide's in and out and they're out alive with, with uh, sand flies. The 
more shall I roam The more shall I see The open road as I walked in and sat down, there was a chap at the bar talking to his grandson and he had his back to me and he went, Oh, I can't stand the jippers. They're all the same. Did you see the way they took the village over yesterday? And I went, Excuse me, do you think if you're going to be racist, you could possibly wait till I'm not here? Because I said, I'm finding it very embarrassing and you're making yourself look even more embarrassing. And the rest of the pub there's probably 20 odd people and it applauded me for the way I pulled him up and he hung his head in shame and walked out. So that was because there was a lot of vehicles visiting, a, a, attending a funeral. I was put forward by one of a, a committee member to perform at a certain festival who is also a very good friend of mine and um, he told me the reason that I wasn't invited to come and play and do my Romany Gypsy stuff is because I might bring lots of other gypsies with me and they might get drunk and they might get fighting so we'd be best off and it would be bad publicity um, to have a gyp gypsy playing at the festival so that was that was vetoed but I played at Plymouth Respect Festival I've done Holocaust in the Roland Levinsky building this was all done freehand, etched, by my uh, youngest son, and um, his name is Tickner. And um, he just sat down one day with an etching pen and done that, which I'm very proud of. This is um, a picture of a gypsy encampment, and cockfighting has been, although it's banned now, and it's no longer done, but it was, in the 100 years ago, it was a very popular sport among travellers um, but we've since stopped doing it there is no longer cockfighting but um, if this was a real scaled model of a cockle he'd be about seven foot tall but he's a fine looking chap well this is a sample of um, gypsy pegs um, many a family kept, got their living from making pegs and wooden flowers and paper flowers and uh, I keep the traditions up I still make pegs and flowers now I don't sell them I just uh, give them to special friends and um, because if you let the traditions die once they've gone they've gone. Uh, these are jig dolls when we were playing the squeeze boxes or fiddles um, the children would be greatly amused by tapping a board under their feet and making them dance to the to the tunes and there isn't a child even in the 21st century with all the computers that don't smile and laugh when they see this. Quick light the outside fire Everything is icy. Tea and something to eat, that'll do nicely. Look at the trees, all white and glistening. The wood is so quiet and no one is listening. The lane where we're stopping is beside a small wood. Even covered in snow, for a traveller, this life is still good. The rest of the camp is just awaking. Outside their tents, some of them shaking. Well, all the new modern... Uh... Homes we have now, bungalows and caravans, they still don't have that comfortable warmth of a traveller's wagon and your instruments and your cooking pots around you and setting and playing music, it's like going back a hundred years in time for me, it gives me rest of mind just to set in here peaceful. Oh, I, I hope you've enjoyed an insight into oh, English Romany traveller's life and um, whoever your God may be, he bless you. Ahead of me, more shall I roam, more shall I see the open road.